Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, we uh, determined that we do not, in fact, have a quorum this meeting, so we won't be making any motions or votes, but we will go through um, the process anyway, so see what we learn and uh, be ready for next month. Um, I don't believe we have, I have not received any uh, adjustments to um, the agenda, so we'll go with the standard agenda. Um, Max, it doesn't look like uh, there's any folks in the audience for comments. Nope, there aren't. Okay. Um, the minutes we have, but we can't vote on them, so we will pump that down till next month. Um, and that takes us to uh, the chair report. Um, I think the only kind of exciting thing that's happened, uh, Bob Butler won his reelection to the select board, which was uh, great news. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but it was, from my perspective, it was great news. Um, and we had, uh, I guess that Max, maybe you'll go through the long list of what we agreed to and what we didn't agree to. Pretty sure everything passed actually on the warrant. And Julie's now attending, so Julie can confirm that in just a minute. Or she can confirm that now, actually. Oh, well, I, you know, I never, Julie, I never noticed that before. Mainly Jersey. I like that. You like that? Isn't that fun? I like that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just getting in my vehicle. Hold on a minute. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Hi. Yes, every, everything passed on the warrant. That's awesome. So uh, some of the, what were some of the uh, kind of highlights of that, Julie? Well, um, I, I oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, that means 80 Gray School, we're going to go forward with that, even because that included transferring it to Volunteers of America with the option for demolition. And it hasn't changed, changed hands yet. We're still going through that whole process, but now it's the more binding resolution on that. Uh, the towns also said that they're fine selling Friendship Street School to the highest bona fide offer um, when we put it on the open market back in April, I think. And there's also the disorderly property ordinance that passed, the medical marijuana licensing ordinance passed, and... Uh, what else am I forgetting, Julie? Oh, how about the uh, parking lot? Parking lot passed. That well. also passed. And okay, C can we uh, talk about that one a little bit? Uh, 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 sure. I don't know how much I can. I don't know how much I know at this point, but yes, I can. So what? So that whole um, uh, process was confusing to me because it seemed like it sold. And then on the warrant, we'd ask if the town would approve us buying the parking lot. But so is it actually available for us to buy? I believe that that is a question that is being resolved by mediation between a potential buyer and, a, and the estate. So there, so there is the possibility that we would, that the town would be able to buy that parking lot. I yes. believe there's a possibility, um, <laughs> but we had already had that question on the to be on the ballot prior to anything happening with any other potential buyer. Obviously, if whatever happens between the other potential buyer and the estate, if, you know, whatever happens there that, you know, if it goes through with the purchaser, it does not mean, um, then, then we obviously we can't buy it. So, right. Right. But again, that's not anything that the town is involved in. We had always intended to put that question to the public prior to any knowing of any litigation or other any other potential buyer. Okay. All right. 
Max, do you have anything to add to that? The Warren articles? Nope. Can't think of anything. All right. Um, and I don't, we obviously had our food pantry today. Um, uh, it, it went smooth. Um, I don't have the numbers, uh, but we were busy. Uh, Natalie and I did a bunch of deliveries as we do now, which is, uh, which is, which is good because it, it reduces the traffic um, off of Friendship, which uh, can actually back right up down to the street, which is, could be a potential risk, I think. Um, but, it, but it ran fairly smooth today. Um, and uh, hopefully our next meeting, I'll be able to update the numbers on that. But we've been, we've been around that 130 to 150 uh, family number, the last number of uh, food pantries. Um, and then I think that's later in the, in the agenda where we're going to talk about the broadband survey, yep. um, the update on that. And John's not here, so we're not able to uh, get a COVID update. Although I could update that I did a COVID test today and I'm negative. <laughs> Good job. Uh, Good news. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Waiting for those those that second line to show up and it never showed up, so it's good. Um, so that take actually does take us to the broadband uh, survey update. Um, so I think uh, Max, you've pretty much got that kind of sorted out. Yep, I'm hoping that. I distributed that to everyone before the uh, last week, and hopefully it now addresses all people's comments, and it's now a two-sided document pretty much. And I spoke with Julie. I think the plan is to now mail out with everyone's tax bills later this month. Am I correct, Julie? To save on postage. She's probably drinking. Yes. Oh. Okay. I was muted. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. You're you're driving. We don't want you to do too many things. Nope. Um, so I think I didn't really have. I don't think there were really that many changes other than just the formatting. Unless I anyone else. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just I I did actually send one little nit in, which was we we ended a sentence with a website address. Yep. And so it was like a dot dot. And so was, to me, that was a little, that could have been confusing to people, but it's, it's a pretty minor thing, I think. But it, it would be better to have that website address without a period at the end. <laughs> oh, you want to just remove the punctuation. I thought you wanted to replace that with a colon. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. No, you know what I'm saying? Like it's www.whateveritis.com dot, because it was the end of a period, at right. the end of a sentence. So it just looked, yeah, it just looked odd to me. And I'm not sure if you put that dot on the website, if it goes to the website or not, actually. Well, be. I mean, it's going to be a paper version, so it's not like anyone can click it. And then uh, it's not like someone's going to be able to press it from the, the paper and then get to the website. Right. You'll want to have them enter it exactly as, as it is there. Um, I think it's going to be... Well, actually, I want to back up. Max, thank you for all the work you've done because this has mostly been you. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, that being said, I, I see Jan's point. I also think anyone that's able to get to that website is probably going to figure that out. But I mean, if it's not printed yet, yeah, it makes sense. Um, I did go to that website, and it's pretty easy to, to run. Yeah. Um, John, I don't know if I sent you the... I don't think you were in my email. No, list. I don't think I was yet either. Here, let me give you this just in case you have any other thoughts. So the only other change that I have is that it's telling people to submit their surveys by August 18th. And I say that at the end, after all the questions are done by the 18th, give it to the town office. Um, that's just a standard we always do. I'm saying the 18th because that gives them about maybe a month, two weeks to have the application filled out and then sent in with the survey, sent into the town with their tax bills. So figure that's more than enough time. 
And then when I get that, that information, it gives me enough time to put something together by the September meeting. So. Yeah, and I, uh, I see George jumped on, so welcome, George. There he is. Now we have a quorum. We do. All right. Um, so were there any other thoughts on the surveys or was it other than the one punctuation item from Jan, but other than that, is there any other changes or is it good to go? I think it's good to go. All right. George, good to go? Yes. All right. Um, Max, that takes us to the town updates. So uh, any planning board items? Um, yeah, it's actually gotten busy. So for this month, there is going to be um, a potential change of use at 1540 Atlantic Highway to be a wholesale business for shellfish purchasing. Someone's going to buy shellfish there and then take it to their place down in Harpswell. So that's one use. And this is the place that's just south of the um, subway next to the town office here between the subway and the Chinese restaurant. I think everyone oh. now has an idea of it. So that's a potential change of use. And I've been talking with the Department of Transportation and they've said they'll, they are issuing them a permit, but the moment that starts uh, doing some traffic queue right onto the street, then that could be a pulled permit. So uh, the applicant is aware of that and he wants to go forward with it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, what were the conditions on that, Max? Wasn't it there was only single axle vehicles, no trailers? Right. So there shouldn't be like a U-Haul, a massive U-Haul truck. There shouldn't be like some semi trucks or anything. This is just, yeah, a single axle truck. The way the DOT, I thought, yes, but with no boat attached to it, correct? That was my understanding. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I think you I mean, might want to clarify that I'll, because I'll when clear. I spoke with the DOT, I said, would that include trailering a boat? And they said, yes. Because well, wouldn't, wouldn't the clamors normally have boats? They'd have a boat attached when they sell their clams. Correct. Is yeah. he, did, did the applicant buy the property? No, he is. I believe the plan is he's going to, uh, Walter Moody, uh, I believe he is going to lease the building for now with the option to purchase later on if it's a successful run. I think that the parcel may have a passage behind it if someone wanted to drive around back and then come out the, the front. I'm not sure of that, but as I, I recall, it's all blocked up back there. I mean, not all blocked up. Because, yeah, I don't I think, think it's possible to do that. Yeah, I think the issue becomes and Max and I had a lot of conversation about this because I seem to remember, and I can't remember exactly who wanted to go in there. There was a lot of issues with that one entrance and one egress, but um, I believe that they're limited to just, because when I spoke to the gentleman from the DOT, I believe he said single axle vehicles only nothing, like you can't have something towed in there. And I, I, I just want to make sure they're aware of that it is only single axle. I do know that. Yep. So I'll confirm the boat so. part. The, yeah, there's that's also the, that's going to be huge. <laughs> there, yeah. There's also the access road that comes in from uh, Depot Street, I think, but it may not reach that building. But in the original property, there's an access road. Uh, I think probably. So Seth that's the, maybe the owner of that. Uh, so the other. So actually, that's the other part of their application. The way that the parcel's done is that people can actually cut through the subway parking lot to get to them. And the owners indicated, at least on their map, that they don't want that. And they're planning on having parking in that little area. So they're going to put some type of divider up to prevent people from going directly from the subway parcel to their parcel. Correct. So the only way to get in would be from that one entrance allowed by DOT. And... Um, to stop having people drive right through subway just to get onto route one. <laughs> so that's the first use. Does anyone have any other questions about that or? Okay. 
Second, the second proposal is for 2018 Atlantic Highway. That's Muscungus Bay uh, boat storage um, near uh, Tyler's Towing. The anyone who remembers that. Um, pretty much, it's just going to be building another uh, 60 by 120 building for boats. Um, pretty much there's good business right now. There's not that much storage space in the mid coast area. So might as well build it now while there's such a huge demand and he can get the supply and it's also to amend it so that he can allow self storage containment units. So what we see everywhere else, this is just, you know, non boat storage as well. And they have Gartley and Dorsky working on it. So it's, it's a pretty well thought out plan and everything. I don't see too much of a difference from that, but they originally have. Any questions for that one? And then other than that, I think there might be a pre-application, but I don't know just yet on that. That's all I have for the planning board, at least for applications. We're gonna be talking about some, how LD2003 is affecting our ordinance and if we should consider any changes to the dimensional standards and housing requirements, uh, just to prepare for that. Um, but yeah, it's that usual part and how we need some people on the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> that LD2000, is that um, concerning like the size of homes, like looking more towards the future as far as smaller homes and efficiency wise or LD, EDUs or something? Uh, LD2003 is where, and thank goodness Bob is not here because I'm sure he would have a lot to say. <laughs> uh, that was the zoning change where essentially as long as your septic and well can handle it, you can have up to four housing units on a lot, regardless of what the town's zoning ordinance says. Is that oh. city water and sewer as well, or is that private? Um, both, pretty much. So, uh, take for example, so in Waldeboro, for example, um, the village area has a 5,000 square foot minimum. Mm -hmm. So, for every unit you have, it has to provide at least 5,000 square feet, and that's on sewer and water. With LD2003, that's pretty much saying um, if you have your single family home on that and you have a, a 5,000 square foot lot for some reason, you can still put on three more units as long as you have a sewer and water system that can handle it. If you're on sewer and water, that's great. If you're on your own private one and it can handle those four units, that's also fine. So it's 5,000 per square unit or 5,000 dollars? 5,000 5, square feet. Square feet per unit. Per, okay. So there, there are pretty specific requirements for a septic system per, well, per toilet. Mm -hmm. um, does this, does, I don't know where this LD came from. I'm surprised it would override local zoning, but um, that's why I say Bob it, would have a lot to say. <laughs> right. Well, no, but it, it, it does. Does this mean that somebody can apply to have a bigger septic system put in in order to cope with more parcels? Because yep. it wouldn't probably be big in the first place. Yep. Okay. Is it common for the state to slacken our zoning? No. I'm, I'm okay. Thing. I was going to say, I was going to refrain from answering that one, but Julie's going to jump in. <laughs> so What's different this was this? a concern. This was a concern of the main municipal association. Um, and a lot of people uh, spoke up about it. a lot of communities spoke up because it does let you have additional dwelling units on your property. And it was, I think, crafted in response to the housing crisis in Maine. Hmm. Uh, and I think that was the impetus behind it. But there was a lot of hue and cry about um, from, from towns that it, it does circumvent some zoning laws. But it was, right. it was put into effect. And I believe it's March, Max, is when this takes effect. Uh, I believe they've kicked it to July 1st of next year at this point. Okay. So they've given us time, but, um, and this is a common problem that I've been hearing from different municipalities. Um, 
not that many are going to have a comprehensive plan ready by November. And while Waldeboro is fortunate to have a June town meeting, uh, some towns are going to have a March town meeting. And that's also assuming that we're going to propose these items and everyone's going to say yes to them. We could come to a point where we get to our June meeting, we have these items proposed and people could just say no. And then starting July 1st, we have to see um, LD 2003 in effect. And it could be a nightmare scenario. It might not. And I might be a, a chicken little right now, but I'd like to have something in place by then. <laughs> So the the uh, the presumption is that if people can put more dwellings on their property, that will provide more housing, and that kind of overlooks the fact that the rent is determined by what you want to charge, not by anyway. Uh, well, and that was part of the argument that many communities said: this isn't guaranteeing that they'll put up another dwelling unit, and it won't go to a Airbnb. It may not pre provide a, you know, a full-time rental for someone. It might just be, you know, part-time seasonal rentals. So that was part of the argument, but it's still passed. Well, I've so not, a town not met that many people who will lower their rent because they can. They usually raise it because they can. Right. So, right. And I'll quickly address the short-term rental one because you also asked about that one. So the state did two items to address short-term rental. First of all, they say towns have the authority to regulate short-term rentals. I didn't realize that was ever a thing we weren't allowed to do, but okay. Um, they didn't give us any guidance on what that type of ordinance could look like, which I think would have been a lot more beneficial, but whatever. Um, and they do have something in there to say that uh, you can't, have that rental unit be rented out for less than 30 days or something. It's trying to combat this idea of it's going to turn these units into short-term rental units, but then it gets to a problem with the rural areas. Who's going to enforce that? Mm. Because in Waldeboro, that means Julie's either going to force myself or Stan or someone else on the staff to pretty much go onto Airbnb and any other short-term rental site pretty much every week to see who is advertising a short-term rental? Was did I understand you to say that the, in order to still do that, you'd have to have at least a certain amount of rental, or not more than a certain amount of rental, or short-term rental units? Yeah. Um, you have the state is saying that it's prohibited to rent out that unit for less than thirty days. Thirty days at a time. Uh, I don't have the exact language in front of me, but it's it's language that's pretty much targeted to short-term rental people. I mean, are they trying to stop Airbnbs? Yes, that's the intent, to stop these uh, new units from being created to immediately just be short-term rental units. But the difficulty is going to be the enforcement action, at least at the state level. And you said new. I'm, I mean, I know people who have them who value that periodic income. This I, is strictly for the LD. Yes. The, the new law, not oh, for existing. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank I you. I mean, what's the reality that somebody's going to be building a three bedroom home for a short term rental? You're probably looking at efficiencies, one bedrooms at most. It depends. I think it depends where they're building. I, people on the shoreland, people near the shoreland are probably going to be the ones wanting to make that investment. Right. But I don't know. And neither do people at the state. <laughs> right. I just, it's hard to imagine like a 5,000 square foot lot's a pretty small lot. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to imagine cramming, you know, other, I, my guess is that people probably end up going with, with uh, mobile homes or something like that, maybe to, well, to, to, fi to meet that need, you know? Well, I can't imagine somebody building four houses on a lot like that. Uh, tiny homes have a increasing appeal. Um, yeah, but they're on wheels, George, right? Uh, they could be on a foundation. Yeah. Well, they they're on wheels back. until they aren't on wheels. <laughs> anyway, uh, this, yeah, this, okay. We'll wait and see. All right. 
Wait what about see. the proposition as far as designating an area for tiny homes and kind of segregating it in a specific area? So the state, I believe, passed a tiny home focus statute two or so years ago that pretty much say that wherever a single family dwelling unit is allowed, we have to allow single uh, tiny homes, which is very similar to what they did for the manufactured homes. Is that as well. based on square footage or is that based on the it's a frame having of axles? Um, they have the state has their definition for what a tiny home is, and I believe it's on the axles. Yeah. Okay. Um, but now that combination of the tiny home statute being forced to be in the town regardless, and now LU 2003, it's probably going to be like a, some tiny home type of subdivisions that are going to be created. Mm -hmm. Possibly. I mean, it's certainly possible. I don't know if you can control it and make it so it doesn't turn into... All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's... So that's the thing that's going to be on the planning board's table for the next few months. Fun stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Julie or Ann Max, any updates on the community center slash medical center? Um, if we're if we've moved on that at all. Um, I believe we got an email saying that there's going to be a letter of intent that we'll have to submit this month. So is this it, for the fund, is this for the funding, Max? Yep, this yes. is for the one million dollars from the congressional delegate spending. Which the fact that we got the announcement back in March, and now we're only getting to a letter of intent now. Um, very slow process. <laughs> and, and and our intent is to issue that letter of intent. No, I think we're going to turn away a million dollars. What do you think, Julie? <laughs> yes, I would say we have an intent. <laughs> okay, good. And and do and have we made any progress on that intent? Um, I think we're working on it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Yeah. So uh, it's moving in the right direction. Can I say I, that? Moving in the right direction, yes. Okay, good. The funding, the funding for, because uh, there's components to this, Maine Health also has a component that they also are working towards too. Yes. Uh, so. The Friendship Street School, maybe somebody was about to talk about that. Oh yeah, George was, wasn't here when we went through the Warren articles. Um, so that did pass um, back. That did pass in June, so I don't know where that exactly is. I think it's just a matter of the buyer looking at the spot, making sure it's all good, and then transfers going through. Did I miss anything, Julie? I don't think so. And is, the town, is, it, is, it, is the town still accepting offers on the property? No, we have a purchase and sale agreement. Okay. With a, with a potential buyer. Good. At the risk of being at the risk. Well, what about the parking lot behind the drugstore? <laughs> um, as I explained at the beginning, um, that passed on the warrant. Um, however, I believe, and this is only based on what was represented at a public meeting, that there's mediation between a potential buyer and the estate that the town has nothing to do with. Um, and, and I don't know the outcome of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, All right. Um, the, the, we're, I think that covers um, kind of the existing town updates. I'm an old business. Jay, um, could, we go, could we go back to broadband for a minute? Oh, sure. Of course. Um, so there, there were a, a couple of things I, I wanted to mention. One is to just get, get ahead of uh, an issue with the town of Southport. Um, I've gotten a lot of email and calls that um, their work on broadband um, didn't go where they wanted it to. And I'm mentioning this because there's always a tendency to accuse other large companies and ISPs of getting involved in another thing. I just want to mention wherever I can to stop that before it starts and remind everyone that these various businesses aren't charities, they're businesses. Yep. Um, 
also businesses we might do good work with. Um, and on an up note, the FCC on the 30th announced an updated broadband map. It used to be an entire census block would be considered served if one home could get internet. And as of the 30th, the FCC is launching a plan where it is per address. So it's a, a much more granular system and let us do uh, some important work. So those are my only two things, but I just wanted to, to mention that. And you might hear me at other meetings beating that same drum. Um, I feel bad for the folks in Southport, but um, I don't want that to uh, negatively impact our, our dealings with these places here. Um, Ruben, just for everyone's benefit, you're talking about Southport's vote on uh, essentially a municipal network that would go throughout their community that would overlay, even though I think 90% of the area was already covered by Charter Spectrum, correct? Right. And so... They voted that down? So I don't have all the details other than um, it stopped. And it seems like there's something of a fight. Of course, everyone's saying that uh, people have blamed uh, Charter and some other people for, for killing that process. Okay. Uh, anything so, else I say as far as municipal networks gets into opinion, this probably isn't the, I don't know what meeting we have for it. Um, I, I know people are going to be upset when they hear things like that get stopped. So I just want to be careful that we don't have anyone, um, you know, say or, or saying bad things at these meetings. Right. Yeah. And if people have other questions, I actually um, on those Lincoln County regional planning meetings, and I've talked with people who were involved in that project a bit. And I, I didn't even know about this bit yet. I probably missed that meeting, but yeah, they got their connect main grant and we're actually well ahead of getting this uh, fiber laid out. And then there was these citizens petitions that came up that essentially said, stop the work and let's just make some fun to expand broadband into the last parts of town. So, and so we were waiting to see what these results were going to be. And I guess those are the results. Um, yeah, it, it sounds like they wanted to, just to clarify or to make sure we're saying the same thing their plan was to to run a new network everywhere and the town said no let's spend less money and just run it where it's not um and that's a neat idea i i hope they're able to succeed with it <laughs> sometimes it's hard to build a partial network like that which is why i've suggested we uh whoever we work with does something across our entire town uh, because that's the kind of project that might actually get completed well, and that's one reason why it is important that we get this information out and we do get these surveys done ahead of time so that people are aware of these projects as well. And then when we do want to pull the trigger on this type of project, we have so much information at hand that it would uh, be very beneficial to get it all done rather than uh, broken out in places where people are saying, oh, well, I didn't know this or that. That way, everybody's clear on what we is key. Yeah, public hearings, information is key. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Thank you. <laughs> right, thanks, Ruben. Um, that takes us to old business. Uh, George, do you want to give us a quick update on what's going on over at American? I say this right, Unagi. Yes. Um, right, there, there are eels living over there. They're like three inches long. <laughs> like a million of them. Uh, this, <laughs> the interior system is um, amazing and I think nearly complete. Uh, they've got the new pump in the well and a lot of the plumbing's done and we've actually started to fix where the road was dug up. And um, I haven't been, I'm away right now on a, away from the office, but um, they're making strides towards growing eels and it seems like it's just going great. How soon will those little three-inch eels be ready for market? Do you know? I don't know. It's uh, over a year, I think. It'd be interesting to know what the you know what the cycle is for that for that business. Interesting. All right. Thank That's you. Right. Any so other updates? Well, any other updates for the uh, Jan? Uh, John actually had a question. Right. Quick question, Jan, oh. for uh, George. Oh, go ahead, John. Is that for direct sale to Asia, or how does that? What's their business model look like? Oh, they're planning on having Asia out of this loop and making the money that the Asians were. 
Oh, so uh, yeah, they American. will be selling them. Yeah, this is for the American market that has been getting them from overseas. Okay. So they got much less mileage on them. So, so John, what's interesting, the history was that these little uh, elvers were being caught here at the Madomic and actually shipped to Japan, raised in Japan, and then shipped back to the American market to be sold to all the sushi restaurants. Well, that's the globalization at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the, the other thing so that's these, notable is that um, it's not just sushi. I, I had some uh, smoked eel the other day that was just really good. I mean, they're, they're doing all kinds of things with it beyond giving it to sushi restaurants. Is there any local purchases over that or do they sell it at the factory or how does that? Oh, they aren't ready to sell it at the factory, but it's, I think, only a matter of time. they got to find somebody to can it. And I mean, right. there's, there's a, a part of their organization is for adding value. Okay. Very interesting. And I agree, George. Smoked eel could be quite delicious. It really was good. Smoked mackerel is another one, by the way. Yeah, we aren't growing mackerel, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yet. All right. Thank you. Um, any other updates for the uh, Walterboro uh, business? Uh... Uh, well, the, the people who make rope need more room. And interestingly, um, the amount of the addition would be small enough so I wouldn't have to go to the planning board. <laughs> Isn't that fortunate? <laughs> but yeah, so, so there may be an addition to one of the buildings to give them a little more space. But yeah, and how big of an addition? Well. How big of an addition doesn't require planning board approval? Uh, according is. to Max, it can't be more than 10% of the contiguous building. Oh, okay. Of the gross square footage of the lot. So if George has a 10,000 square foot building now, if George has multiple buildings on his property that total up to 10,000 square feet, he can make a 1,000 square foot addition, but a 1,000 one, a 1,000 and one square foot addition would mean it goes to the planning board. Got it. And the fact is this building addition would be on about a 40,000 square foot building. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty solved, pretty much solves it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, but that is, from the standpoint of the practical side of all matters, um, it makes this a much more doable project if we decide we you know, can afford it. Yeah, Max, it. All right, uh, Max, any more discussions on the uh, TIF district in terms of uh, looking at some projects that we might want to consider for future expansion? So there were four amendments that I was thinking for the TIF district. Um, first is to actually remove the Sylvania site and the Haas's house. And that is so we can remove the original value it was assessed at when it was placed in the TIF back in 2019, which was its combined total of $555,000. Um, removing it now would mean when we put it back in, since it's under town ownership, means that original value would go back down to zero. And we kind of want that because right now it's valued at zero. So we're not really going to gain anything until that... We're losing so much until that is gone. So this is just so we can gain more money in the next, over the cycle of this TIF. Fortunately, we're doing this early in this TIF cycle, so we're not really losing that much money. Um, second change is, second change is actually business park related because of American Unaki. Um, they just asked us to do a technical item to address it because George, um, American Unagi's lot was created because of two separate lots that you own, correct? Yes. Yeah, so they just asked us to make that correction in the acreage and values to pretty much say it's all part of the same two lots, but it's now its own defined lot. So it's more of house cleaning, record keeping stuff. Yeah, um, it's just a, t it's a tiny corner of, of a second lot is so it's predominantly yeah. the six acres is on one of the original parcels right and it's it's again it's more just record keeping for us but they just they recommended that Do you, does the value uh that the tiff value reflect the improvements inside of it like the equipment 
Uh, I don't believe it does. That's a, that's a call for Daryl. Um, there's real property and then there's something else. Personal property. Personal. And, we only, and we only do the real property. The, the tanks are integral. I mean, they're in the floor uh, of the cement floor. It would seem like uh, if, if the landlord owner distinction carries forward, then the majority of these tanks are embedded in the floor with the plumbing under the floor meaning they could never be taken out. So I don't know if that plays into that analysis or not. Yeah, George, I mean, I mean to tell you, that's been one of the fun things Daryl's had with how to evaluate um, American Yunagi because this is the most unique one he's had to deal with in Waldeboro. Yeah. <laughs> Just how do you evaluate this one? Well, I would go high if it's for TIF money. You're encouraging higher <laughs> taxes? <laughs> No. <laughs> well, that's about what happened. Yeah, that's okay, how it well then, but then anyway, not. Anyways, anyway. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, <laughs> just going, back, Rose, yeah. going to the going back to the main focus here. So that's two amendments. Third amendment would possibly be adding in two new two separate lot two new lots. Um and they're businesses that are looking at making some pretty big expansions outside of the industrial park. Um, I was going to talk to Daryl to get an idea for how much those would be to see if it's worth it because they're already valued at pretty high prices. So I'm just going to check with Daryl to see if it's something that would be worth to include or not. Uh, and I'm just leaving them a bit anonymous right now, just because I don't want any, you know, jumping to conclusions or anything. But the, but the TIF the TIF district, Max, it, it's a living organism yeah. in a way, right? So yeah. if there's ways to capture some TIF money, mm -hmm. now we should do that, even if it means down the road we want to reallocate that TIF district somewhere else, I think. I don't know right. if I'm right on that. Well, what I want to avoid is just constantly making amendments every two or three months just to capture a few bucks because it is a lot of time that's going into it. So with these two properties, supposedly they're going to be making some pretty big expansion projects, but that's what I need to check with Daryl about to see, well, how much would this actually be for improvements? Is this, is this an American Unagi size type of construction where we want to capture all that? Or is it going to be a, you know, a small $2,000 addition to the, um, property that's not really going to do much for value. So that's something and I just want to check with Daryl about. And we, and we got some time to figure all that out, right? Right. I'm hoping we can get this the TIF amendments proposed by the November warrant, because that would be good to have by then. Um, but that's what I have to check. And I saw, Jen, your hand was up. To answer my question, I was going to ask you how, how and when we were going to be looking at at um, getting this, but you're indicating it's going to be a, hopefully on the warrant in November. So that's what. Our, our, I don't raise my hand. Are solar collectors on a roof? Uh, how are those assessed or taxed? That's the fun thing that I keep getting back and forth answers on because I'm told that what happens is they're, they're not taxed by the town, but we do count the value. And we have to go to the state to get half that money back from them. It's a weird formula. And Daryl's the one who would have to explain it because I'm, I don't get involved in that. And he, he's had just as much fun with trying to deal with that. Well, so, and the reason I ask is that the people in the park, several, including American Unagi, have been approached repeatedly by people who would like to sell uh, solar collectors to pay our electric bills, um, mm -hmm. would that be tiffable is the other question. Um, if they put solar on their roofs? Yes. I'd have to ask, I'll ask Daryl, because I honestly <laughs> your, don't know. Your, your silence says a lot. <laughs> well, well, because solar farms were the things that I wanted to put in the TIF district, and some towns have done that, but apparently they're not seeing any value brought in unless they bring in an expert 
to uh, make this valuation for them. So I need to talk to Daryl to see what the roof, um, what the roof would be considered. So I can ask Daryl and have that answer um, soon, pretty much. Yeah. I'm away from the office right now, but if there is information, I'd love to see that email. Okay. But, you know, I would think, George, if, if I put a solar array on my roof, I wouldn't expect my taxes to go up because of that. The resale value of your house goes up. Yeah, but if my taxes are going up, why would I put a solar array on? To make yourself electricity. Well, yeah, but and then pay more taxes. So, so let me, I'll ask Daryl about that because I honestly don't know. And this, it's again a thing where the state made some rule and we're just trying to follow how on earth it works. So, it, yeah, it would, seem, it would seem that would be a tax exempt kind of thing, but I'm no expert. That, I so, think that would be great. Yes. I, the only reason I ask is to do it with the TIFs. Right. So, I'll yeah. ask Daryl. Um, the Max, other, it, if it helps your case at all, um, I'm, I think I'm a new sower installed for the year and I don't care if my data is shared on that front, if that helps you answer any of that. Yeah, I can certainly check your tax card and that would, uh, yeah, it might be on there. So I can check Ruben's tax card as well. All right. So I'll check that. Um, the last amendment that I wanted to just point out was I was going to include some new projects in the list that we have on there. Uh, when we were getting this TIF passed, it was more economic focused, but the state amended it so that we can allow uh, stuff that was traditionally on the housing TIF. So um, this includes the demolition of the demolition or uh, rehabilitation of town town owned properties, pretty much, so that it can be used for an economic or a housing uh, related project. Uh, optionally, we can also include something on acquiring property so that it can be used for housing and uh, economic projects. There's also uh, high-speed broadband expansions that can go for non-commercial areas as well. Um, there's also items to address childcare for building facilities as well as training individuals in nonprofits so that we can address those staffing issues. And... Um, there was probably, oh, there's like some traffic calming item that I wanted to include in there so that uh, the village plan that DOT did for a town meeting here once where they were saying what they would do to fix the Route 220 Jefferson and uh, Main Street intersection, the one we all love downtown. Yep. Uh, that's something that the funding could be used for as well. Um, and I think that's, all of them. There's probably some, oh, there are also some amendments just to address invasive species on our trails and recreational areas. And I'll, uh, I'll put, put out what I have as an amendment, uh, just so some people can take a look at it. Okay. But those were the amendments and I don't know if there's other thoughts for what to include in it for projects or properties, I'm very open to hearing it. So, so Max, one of the things is we went around and around on expanding sewer and water. Yeah. Um, are we still interested in any of those projects? I'd love to still do those projects. It's a matter of finding a feasible way of doing it. And we'd have to find someone who uh, would essentially make it worth doing that type of expansion. Like if we were to get it up the hill, heading towards Noble Borough, right? There's no one up there who really needs the sewer water, and it's not like, and we don't have anyone saying they're going to build a Target or a, a Trader Joe's up there. So there's not going to be that type of demand for it, and that's going to put the town out a few million dollars. Why couldn't the town? Can the town fund housing? I, I mean, that's what you need it for is housing. Targets, you know. You know, oh, yeah. I'm going to get the, the, the flow, let's call it. Well, the sewer and water expansion is part why I'm making that amendment to the uh, TIF, because originally it was, it had to be for an economic project, like it had to be for jobs. But with the amendment I'm proposing, it can go towards a housing project now. Yeah. Um, and same thing with the acquisition of property. If 
people are fine with that, then the town could use the TIF money to purchase a property that can then be used for an affordable housing project. What does TIF stand for? Please? Tax increment financing. And I'll, again, I'll send out the base, uh, the base TIF that we have, and it'll include the amendments that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, hey, Max, do you happen to have that is added on these options to as as possibilities jen can you repeat that question do you happen to have the document from the state that lists these new options for us to consider i don't i usually i can send a link that will okay. take people to the tiff itself to the state statute itself and i'll list out all the allowed uses okay perfect All right, is that it? Yep, unless anyone has any other questions. So that's uh, that wraps up old business. Um, any new business? Looking, I don't see any hands up. Well, now that George is here, you can approve the minutes. Uh, we could, we could go back and approve the minutes. So we'll, let's go back up to, uh, we have a motion to approve the minutes for the, um, uh, June meeting. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Ruben says aye. Yeah, All right. The, the minutes are approved as issued. And this Thank you, Max. For, and this was for May and June? That yep. was for June. That's do, oh, did we June. not, are we uh, behind on May? Yeah, you didn't. Uh, it was just deferred in June because I didn't have the May minutes ready. Okay. Uh, could we have a motion to approve the May minutes? So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Those are approved as well. Thank you. And I think that's uh, that just about wraps things up for us. Uh, unless anybody has any comments. John, welcome aboard. Thank you. Once you get your, you'll get your interview. That'll be quick, and then we'll you'll be a, a voting member. Be awesome. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all.